All right, let's take on the examples for angle side angle and angle angle side triangle congruence. Remember that what we need to find are two angles and one side, either with the side in the middle or two angles in a row and then a side outside of the two angles that are all congruent in order to show that two triangles are congruent. So for our first example A, it says what information do you need in order to prove that these two triangles are congruent using the angle side angle postulate. So in order to use that one we need to have two angles and a side in between them that are all congruent. Now we can see here that side A, or I'm sorry, angle A is congruent to angle U and that angle C is congruent to angle V. So all we need in order to use angle side angle is that side in between them. So if we can prove that side VU, VU is congruent to side AC, then we can show that the two triangles are congruent. But until we know that that's the case, we don't know whether or not they're congruent. Okay, let's take a look at example B. Example B asks us to write a two column proof. Tells us that angle C is congruent with angle E. So we have C here and E down here, and they're congruent. And it tells us that side AC is congruent with side AE. So our side up here on the top is congruent with the side down the left hand edge over here. Okay, and then we need to prove that triangle ACF is congruent with triangle AEB. Okay, so let's take a look at the proof. First thing we have, our first statement, is just our givens. It's the angle C and angle E are congruent, and side AC and side AE are congruent. That's what we just went over. Now, statement two is a good one. It's, um, it's pretty obvious, but you definitely need to point it out, and it's interesting to note, and that is that based on the reflective uh, property of congruence, we know that reflexive property of congruence, we know that anything is equal to itself. And since angle A over here is used in both triangles, and it's congruent to itself, that gives us another angle that we know is congruent with the two triangles. This angle up here it exists in ABE and AFC. So now, since we have one angle, C, one side, AC, and angle A, as congruent with their corresponding angles in the other triangle, we can use angle side angle to say that the two triangles are indeed congruent. So the only thing we're really missing based on our initial information was to note that A was congruent with itself. It gave us that other angle we needed. Okay, let's take a look at example C. Example C asks what information we need in order to prove that the two triangles are congruent using first angle side angle. So let's take a look at that. We're told that angle E is congruent with angle R, and we're told that side QR is congruent to side EF. So in order to get angle side angle, we need to know the angle on the other end of that side. So over here, that would be angle F. We'd have to know that angle F was congruent to angle Q. If that was the case, then we could use angle side angle. Now in order to use angle angle side, we have to have sort of two angles in a row and then a side outside of it. So since again, we know that E and Q, or I'm sorry, E and R, are congruent angles, and that QR and EF are congruent sides, we need to know in this case that G is congruent to P. If G were congruent to P, then we could say that angle, angle, side showed us that our two triangles were congruent. That's all there is to it.